Have you ever stood in the shadow of a mountain, not one made by tectonic plates and geologic time but by human hands and human ambition? Ever wondered how the ancient Egyptians with no power tools, no cranes, no modern machinery, raised these colossal monuments to the sky? It's a question that has echoed through the millennia, sparking theories of lost technologies and even extraterrestrial intervention. But the truth, as is often the case, is both more grounded and, in its own way, more magnificent. It's a story of human ingenuity, a cosmic ballet of physics and grit choreographed on the sands of the Nile. Today, we're going on a journey, not across the cosmos but back in time to the very quarries and construction sites of the Giza Plateau. We'll brush away the sands of speculation and reveal the actual tools that built the pyramids. Using historical records, archaeological findings and stunning real-world footage and photographs, we will piece together this incredible puzzle. We'll hold these ancient instruments, at least virtually, in our hands and understand the science and the sweat that went into every perfectly placed block. So, prepare yourself. We are about to embark on an exploration into the heart of ancient engineering. This isn't just a story about building tombs, it's a testament to what we, as a species, can achieve when we align our efforts with the fundamental laws of the universe. It's a story of how simple tools guided by brilliant minds can touch the heavens and leave a legacy that outlasts empires. Let's begin our journey back to the age of the pharaohs. Our story begins not with a bang but with a soft, reddish gold glint in the desert sun. Copper. It might seem counterintuitive using a relatively soft metal to carve mountains of stone, but the universe doesn't always operate on our modern intuitions. The ancient Egyptians were masters of their materials, understanding the properties of the cosmos on a deeply practical level. The limestone that formed the bulk of the pyramids, while massive, is a relatively soft sedimentary rock. For this task, hardened copper was the perfect instrument, the scalpel for their geological surgery. Imagine the scene. Thousands of workers, their rhythmic chanting, a symphony of labor, spread across the vast limestone quarries. Each one holds a copper chisel, its edge painstakingly sharpened and hardened by hammering. They didn't just wildly hack at the stone, they were precise. They would cut deep grooves outlining the colossal blocks, a testament to their incredible foresight and planning. This wasn't just brute force, it was a delicate, patient process, a conversation between the tool and the stone guided by the steady hand of its user. Every single block, some weighing more than an elephant, began its journey with the patient bite of these humble copper chisels. The sheer scale of this operation is almost beyond comprehension. Millions of chisel strikes, echoing for decades under the Egyptian sky. The copper would dull, it would need to be reforged and resharpened endlessly, a constant cycle of use and renewal. This process speaks to a profound understanding of metallurgy and logistics. They had to mine the copper, smelt it, shape the tools, and distribute them to a workforce the size of a city. The copper chisel wasn't just a tool, it was the foundational technology of an entire monumental enterprise, the first critical link in a chain of ingenuity that would ultimately reach for the stars. A chisel, no matter how sharp, is a silent partner. It needs a voice, a force, an impulse to drive it into the heart of the stone. That voice came from the forests of the Nile Valley, in the form of the wooden mallet. This simple tool, often just a shaped piece of dense, heavy wood like acacia, was the engine behind the chisel's cut. It was the percussive beat to which the pyramids were built, the rhythmic pulse of their creation. Each strike was a transfer of energy, a concept as fundamental as gravity. The worker's kinetic energy, focused through the mallet, propelled the chisel forward. Think about the physics at play. The broad, heavy head of the mallet allowed for a powerful blow without shattering the handle of the more delicate copper chisel. It was a perfect marriage of materials, the dense, shock-absorbing wood meeting the metal in a controlled burst of force. This wasn't just about carving. When the massive blocks were being maneuvered into their final resting place, a gentle tap from a mallet could nudge a two-ton stone that final, crucial millimeter. It was a tool of both great force and surprising finesse, a testament to how simple machines can amplify human intent. The sound must have been extraordinary, not just a few taps but thousands of mallets, striking chisels in unison, a constant resonating drumbeat across the entire Giza Plateau. It was the sound of a civilization bending the planet's geology to its will, 
The wooden mallet represents the human element in this grand equation. It's the direct interface between the worker's muscle and the monumental task at hand. It's a reminder that for all the brilliant geometry and planning, the pyramids were built by the sweat and rhythmic, tireless effort of human beings, one mallet strike at a time. Before the finesse of the chisel, before the shaping and the smoothing, there was a need for brute force. Not all stone used in the pyramids was the relatively soft limestone. The inner chambers and sarcophagi were often crafted from granite, a much harder igneous rock quarried hundreds of miles to the south in Aswan. Copper chisels would be all but useless against such a formidable opponent. For this the Egyptians turned to an even more primal technology stone itself. They fought fire with fire or in this case rock with rock using heavy stone hammers. These weren't your average hammers. They were large, rounded dolerite pounders. Dolerite is an incredibly hard, dense mafic rock, tougher than the granite it was tasked to break. Workers would relentlessly pound the granite surfaces not to cut it but to pulverize it. It was a painstaking process of attrition. They would bash away at the rock, turning the surface to dust, slowly and methodically lowering the face of the quarry to release the giant block within. This was the heavy artillery of the ancient Egyptian toolkit, requiring immense strength and even more patience. Imagine the scene at the Aswan quarry, the air thick with rock dust, the deafening percussive crash of dolerite on granite. This was the epic, elemental struggle at the heart of the pyramid's construction. It demonstrates a core principle of engineering, use the right tool for the job. The Egyptians understood that different challenges required different solutions. They didn't have one magic tool, they had a sophisticated, tiered system of technologies. From the brute force impact of the stone hammer to the surgical precision of the copper chisel, each perfectly suited to its cosmic task. So. You've quarried your blocks, some weigh a few tons, others as much as a small fleet of cars. They are miles from their final destination, a destination that happens to be hundreds of feet up in the air. How do you move them? This is where the true genius of Egyptian physics comes into play. They didn't fight gravity, they danced with it. They built enormous ramps of earth, rubble and brick, creating an artificial mountain to climb their man-made one. These ramps, snaking up the side of the growing pyramid, were the highways of this vertical city. But a ramp alone isn't enough. You must conquer friction, that fundamental force that resists motion. To do this, they employed another simple yet brilliant technology, wooden rollers and sledges. They would place a massive stone block onto a wooden sledge and then lay a path of logs or rollers in front of it. As the sledge was pulled forward by teams of workers, it would roll over the logs. The logs from the back would be frantically moved to the front, creating a kind of temporary, movable conveyor belt. It's a beautiful example of converting sliding friction, which is very high, into rolling friction, which is much, much lower. To reduce friction even further, evidence suggests they lubricated the path, not with oil, but with water, poured onto the sand in front of the sledge. This created a thin, slick layer, allowing the multi-ton behemoth to glide with astonishingly less effort. Think of it. It's a sublime application of fluid dynamics. They understood that the right amount of water would bind the sand, creating a firm, slippery surface. With ramps to manage the vertical climb and lubricated rollers to conquer friction, the Egyptians orchestrated a slow, deliberate ballet, moving mountains of stone with nothing more than wood, water, and an impeccable understanding of the laws of physics. Building tall is one thing. Building tall, straight, and true is another thing entirely. The Great Pyramid of Giza is an icon of precision. Its base is almost a perfect square, its sides are aligned almost perfectly with the cardinal directions of the compass. This wasn't an accident, it was a feat of surveying and measurement that would be impressive even today. To achieve this, the Egyptians relied on tools of elegant simplicity, tools that harnessed one of the most reliable forces in the universe, gravity. Their primary instrument for vertical truth was the plumb bob. A plumb bob is simply a weight, or bob, suspended from a string. Gravity ensures that the string hangs perfectly vertical, pointing directly to the center of the earth. By holding this device against their rising walls, the builders could ensure they weren't leaning in or out. They also used A-frame levels, which were essentially a plumb bob, mounted in a large A-shape. When the bob hung directly below the apex and aligned with a mark on the crossbar, the two feet of the frame were perfectly level. 
It's a simple, foolproof way to create a perfectly flat horizontal surface. With these tools, they could check every course of stones, ensuring the pyramid grew not just upwards, but upwards, with geometric perfection. They also used sighting rods and their deep knowledge of the stars to establish their initial baselines, aligning the entire structure with the cosmos itself. This is what elevates the pyramids from mere buildings to scientific marvels. They are not just piled stones, they are a physical manifestation of mathematics, a structure built in harmony with the fundamental forces and alignments of our planet and the solar system. The plum bob and the level were the instruments that translated that cosmic harmony into stone. So we find ourselves back in the present, the desert sun casting long shadows from these timeless structures. We've seen that there were no aliens, no lost super technologies. The secret to the pyramids was something far more profound, human ingenuity. From the patient bite of the copper chisel to the undeniable truth of the plum bob, we see a story of deep understanding. These simple yet effective tools, when placed in the hands of a determined and organized civilization, made one of history's greatest wonders possible. It's a powerful reminder that the greatest force in the universe isn't some hidden magic, but the collaborative power of the human mind. The pyramids are not an ending, but a beginning. They are perhaps the most famous example of ancient engineering, but they are far from the only one. All across the globe, from the aqueducts of Rome to the Great Walls of China, from the temples of Angkor Wat to the cities of the Maya, our ancestors left behind breathtaking monuments to their skill and ambition. Each one holds its own secrets, its own stories of tools and techniques waiting to be rediscovered. They are chapters in the grand saga of our species' journey as builders and thinkers. I invite you to continue this exploration. Look at the world around you, both ancient and modern, and ask how. How was that built? What principles of physics and engineering are at play? The universe is full of puzzles and the legacy of our ancestors provides a magnificent instruction manual. Keep questioning, keep learning and never lose that sense of wonder, for it is in that wonder that we find our deepest connection to the cosmos and to the incredible story of us.